Oh, we do get the occasional person, some amateur someplace who, who feels that uh, two brothers in Abu Dhabi literally did email us and say they, they could easily collect a million dollars because they, together, every morning, make the sun rise. <laughs> now, this is the, the absolute stupid end of the spectrum, of course. There are other more sensible ones, but not much more sensible. So I presumed an experiment. I said, OK, we could do an experiment. Which one of you does it? Well, we don't know. I say, well, one of you shoot the other and then call me. <laughs> and the next morning, if the sun rises, it wasn't him. And we can proceed with the test. You shoot yourself. And then the following morning, if the sun still rises, oh, both of you lose. But if it does, doesn't rise, then, of course, you both win. And uh, I have to pay you the million dollars. But none of us will care by then, will you? Now, I'm, I'm treating this rather lightly in, in giving you some of the examples of the really, really inane, if not insane, offers that come to us for winning the million dollars. And it's very easy for you to get the notion, oh, these are dunderheads, these are idiots, they're, they're crazy. I wouldn't do that sort of thing. No, of course you wouldn't do that sort of thing. I agree there. But there are a lot of scientists who would and have. I'm going to give you a quick example. Lawrence Livermore Labs in California, populated almost exclusively by physicists, the queen of science. Well, I got a call from a gentleman physicist there. He said, uh, Mr. Randy, hate to tell you, but you've lost your million dollars. <gasps> I was terrified. I said, yes, really? Oh, yes, obviously. We've got a gentleman here from Israel. No, it wasn't Uri Geller, but it was a would-be Uri Geller. Uh, Ronnie Marcus was his name. I said, I'm sorry, I don't know the gentleman by name. He said, oh, yes. Well, we did some tests with him, and uh, we examined it very carefully, weighed it right down to a few micrograms. We removed a match from the box. We tested it. It was a real match. It actually lit on the side of the box. It's a real match. Looks like a real matchbox to me. Examined it for wires, magnets. We laser beamed it, infrared, lasers, the whole thing. Scanned it very thoroughly. MRI, the whole, we gave it everything you could possibly give it in a high-tech laboratory like Lawrence Livermore. That's an ordinary matchbox. I'm a scientist, I know about these things, okay? We then gave it to Mr. Ronnie Marcus, and he said, Mr. Ronnie Marcus did the most astonishing demonstration with it. I said, what could that be, suspecting the back of my head that maybe they had fallen for something rather simple. Well, this is what they said he did with it. He said he placed it on the back of his hand, and then right in front of us, it very slowly rose off the back of his hand to a standing position like that. And then he said to the matchbox, go back down again, and very slowly the matchbox descended towards the back of his hand like that. I said, well, that sounds like a million dollars worth to me. And I was prepared to pay the million dollars, except that I had heard somewhere in the back of my head about tricks like this. <laughs> so I said, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I said to them, um, you, you're sure you did examine the box? Oh, yes, we, we're scientists. We examined the box. We weighed it, laser beams, infrared, the whole thing. Oh, OK, but wait a minute. Um, what's your fax number? Well, they gave me the fax number. So I went to my library and I picked out a book by Martin Gardner called Impromptu Magic Tricks, written specifically for the purpose of the amateur magician who wants to do a trick at the next party without having to strip naked and run around with a lampshade in his head, you know? It's a lot cheaper and easier, and it may not win as many girls, but what the heck? You know, it's, it's a little more respectable. And this is on page 72, and it was called The Levitating Matchbox Trick. I'm going to instruct you how you too can become a psychic from Israel. Watch carefully. <laughs> As you show them the box like this, you leave it open just a little bit like that. You place it on the back of your hand in that open and As you close the box, you pinch some of the skin on the back of your hand. You see, it gets pinched in there like that. See if I can make this box do it once more because it's sort of broken down. And then, oops, uh, I better use the other end here because that end is a little broken from having just done the trick here. You simply close the box up like that and then it just slowly, as you tighten up your hand a little bit, it rises up, you see, because it's pinching the skin at the back of your hand. Okay, okay. 
And this will fool them at Lawrence Livermore, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I have another one here, looks exactly the same. I um, informed them of this, sent them the facts, never heard from them again, <laughs> and that was three years ago. I've tried to get in touch with them, but they don't seem to be communicative anymore. <laughs> we can all be fooled by simple magic tricks. A trick like that, that's a good parlor trick, yeah. But wait a minute now, this is a bunch of scientists. Okay, here we go.